Hi everybody, this is Rudy Leatherman with the HBB Pro Sales Group. I had a unique opportunity recently to work with my old partner uh, Jim Hall over at the Coed uh, uh, Training Center uh, back in their furnace lab. Um, we were able to uh, put a prop together and do some different scenarios with the system evacuation just to see what uh, see what we could find out. And it was really interesting. Um, You'll see here in a second, I've just got a bunch of video clips. I'm going to do a voiceover on uh, the first one. Basically, we were looking at two things. One is the difference in the capabilities of a uh, 12 CFM, in this case a Hillmore 12 CFM vacuum pump, as opposed to the 3 CFM Hillmore vacuum pump. And it doesn't matter the uh, manufacturer. Um, basically, what we're looking at here is the difference between a... Uh, uh, 12 and a 3 CFM pump on a uh, probably a two and a half ton piece of equipment, two and a half, three ton A coil, and then about 50 feet of line set. We looked at two pretty um, uh, simple um, uh, variations. Um, one, we just timed the difference between uh, the pulling down the uh, 50 feet of line set and the A coil uh, between the uh, 3 and the 12 CFM pump. And then the other thing we looked at, as you can see in this picture, we had a micron gauge um, located on the uh, valve core removal tool uh, or on the suction line. And then up on the liquid, into the liquid line, um, we had a, uh, uh, another micron gauge mounted on one of VacuTools uh, quarter pressers, which is a real nice way to get access uh, to different fittings. Um, so let's take a look and, uh, and see what we got. Okay, so here are the two different scenarios and apparently a bunch of crows in the background. <laughs> I didn't notice when I was doing these videos. Uh, the upper left, as you can see, is the uh, 12 CFM pump. The DC motor, so it's got a little bit of delay between when you kick the um, switch and then uh, open things up. I tried to do it all simultaneously. Uh, down the lower right-hand corner, we've got the 3 CFM pump. And here in a little bit, let's uh, pay, pay attention to the uh, 12 CFM pump on the upper left hand uh, side. And you can see it's starting to pull down. Now that micron gauge is mounted right at the uh, valve core removal tool. And a little bit later you can see we're approaching 500 microns. Now the interesting thing here, and it was a minute 15 seconds, Interesting thing here is I go a hundred and some odd feet away to the uh, service valve we brazed into the liquid side and you can see it's about 1600 microns. Um, and same kind of scenario with the uh, one on the bottom right hand corner. Uh, by the time the 3 CFM pump pulled it down to uh, 500 microns on the valve core tool, uh, 100 feet away, 100 feet plus away um, at the liquid line. Uh, we were still at about 15-1600 microns. So, summing this all up and uh, trying to keep it under five minutes is going to be a little bit of a challenge because I think I've ended up with more questions than I <laughs> answered. <laughs> so, anyway, um, that's what's make, making this so interesting. Um, and you can see here, just looking at the difference that the uh, micron gauge at the valve core tool was seeing as opposed to the liquid line, uh, valve core tool, you can see it's pretty dramatic. Um, when the valve core tool on either the 12 or the 3 CFM pump hit 500 microns, uh, we weren't even close to that, um, uh, you know, 100 plus feet away on the liquid line uh, service valve. Um, and so I think what that points out is that if you, if you only have access to the um, valve core tool mic, uh, to put a micron gauge on, you need to make sure you're way under uh, 200 microns, maybe even as low as possible. Um, if you're doing it from the, uh, or the, the uh, liquid line service valve, you're gonna, what you're gonna, uh, what I saw happen 
was a couple of times um, once we valved the uh, the uh, you know uh, isolated the um, refrigerant lines. Uh, actually, that was sort of interesting because the micron gauge on the valve core tool started ticking up, and the micron gauge on the um, uh, liquid line service valve kept ticking down because. Uh, one thing that I've known for a long time, but it was nice to see it, was that um, you know, pressure equalizes real quickly in a system. Uh, vacuum doesn't, and it's because of this uh, concept called conductance speed that I'm still trying to get my mind wrapped around. Um, it takes a long time uh, for a vacuum to travel through the whole system, and the reason the micro gauge is going up is because as you travel through the system, it encounters uh, more moisture, it evaporates that moisture off, um, and then uh, um, you'll you'll start losing uh, losing vacuum. And the one thing about this uh, uh, this BlueVac Pro micron gauge that's real nice is it actually um, will give you a pass fail. You can do a decay test, and it will actually give you a pass fail. And I'm hoping to demonstrate that sometime. The other thing I wanted to take a look at was the uh, effect that uh, vacuum pump uh, CFM rating would have on the speed uh, that it pulls a piece of equipment down. Um, and I first uh, became aware of this uh, from a book that was published in 1959 called A Review of Vacuum for Service Engineers. It's kind of an industry classic, I think. But uh, in any case, um, what that book, that particular reference book says is the way you size a vacuum pump is you square the CFM rating of the pump, and that'll tell you how many tons of equipment it'll handle. So in other words, a 3 CFM pump should be able to handle up to a, a 8 or 9 ton piece of equipment. A 12 CFM pump uh, should be able to handle up to a 140, 150 C, uh, a ton piece of equipment. So keep that in mind. Um, and I think that uh, was pretty much borne out here when you look at the, um, uh, the timing. Depending on the location uh, at the valve core tool, uh, the 12 CFM pump was able to get to 500 microns in a minute 15 seconds, the 3 CFM pump in a minute 37 seconds, uh, a little more than a 20 percent uh, increase um, at the liquid line where again I think it's the most important place to be measuring it uh, the uh, 12 CFM pump took 3 minutes 35 seconds the seat uh, the 3 CFM pump took 3 minutes 51 seconds uh, less than a 10 percent uh, difference um, so and there's a lot of other factors to consider you know for example here that 12 CFM pump has a DC motor in it if you had a lot of rooftop units that you were doing with that DC motor, it says right in the manual, you can run a 16 gauge extension cord up to 50 feet um, and not have to worry about damaging the motor. If you tried that with the 3 CFM motor, uh, the 3 CFM pump that has a, a standard um, uh, AC motor in it, uh, you would probably damage the motor uh, running it on a, on a um, um, 16 gauge extension cord. Um, so in any case, what I was trying to demonstrate here was that um, while the CFM rating of the pump is an important factor, um, perhaps even a more important factor is the length, the diameter, and the material that the uh, evacuation hose is made out of. I'm guessing that if I'd have, and I'll give this a try at some point, um, but I'm guessing if I would have tried to use a, a gauge set, um, to pull a vacuum, irregardless whether it was the 3 or the 12 or the 8 CFM pump, um, I would guess it probably would have taken at least a half hour, maybe 45 minutes for it to uh, pull a vacuum. So anyway, that was kind of the, um, the two of the things that I wanted to uh, demonstrate here with this video. Uh, I hope this information has been helpful. Um, I'm planning on doing some more here in the near future, hopefully before summer gets here. Um, so I hope that, again, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, take care, and I appreciate your time watching. Bye.